This is Train Your Body with Melanie Cole, an expert guest from the American College of Sports Medicine on Radio MD. If you're like most of us, when you exercise, cramps happen. They happen at night while you're sleeping. They happen in the back by your hamstrings. They happen in your calves. They happen all over the place, and you wonder, oh, my God, is it my heart? It happens in your calf. Is it a blood clot? Well, muscle cramps happen when you exercise. Why do they happen? Well, we are about to find out even what you can do about them. My expert today is Dr. Michael Bergeron. He's the president and CEO of Youth Sports of the Americas, headquartered in Birmingham, Alabama. Welcome to the show, Dr. B. So cramps, I've been getting asked about cramps for 25 years in the business. Should I be eating bananas? Should I take quinine? Should I drink tonic water? Should I drink chocolate? What are cramps and what do we do about them? Well, thank you, Melanie. Uh, you're right. They, they, they affect a lot of athletes. If you've been involved in physical activity or sports uh, long enough, uh, eventually you've, you've experienced them. And they're very, very common, even with highly fit athletes. And, and those of us who have had them know that uh, they can be very painful and, and very debilitating. Uh, during exercise, what's important to recognize is there's really two categories of skeletal muscle cramping. And, and one is related to overloading the muscle. In other words, the muscle is compromised, the muscle tendon is compromised, it may be damaged, it's fatigued. And as you said, you oftentimes get that in the calf, whether it's with running or sometimes cycling or swimming. And, and really, this is an indication of a locally overworked muscle. And, and it often tends to cramp when it's in that shortened uh, position, so the push-off when you're, when you're running or, or, or as you're swimming again. And what happens in those kind of cramps is you're really disrupting the normal control of muscle tension and, and relaxation. So because of the changes to the tendon and the muscle maybe itself, uh, it, it kind of goes into uh, an involuntary spasm. And, and you can treat that by, you know, stopping what you're doing, of course, uh, stretching it, uh, you know, modify the intensity, modify the way you're exercising, uh, sometimes contracting the opposite side, what they call the antagonist muscle group can help it to relax. But it's really a function of uh, fitness or, or poor biomechanics or, uh, you know, lack of stretching and, and range of motion that's caused Generally, that that's generally what it is. Poor biomechanics, lack of range of motion, poor stretching or overuse, maybe even bad shoes can cause it. And what yeah. about the other types of cramping? Yeah, well, that, the other type is, is really unrelated to uh, fitness or, or overworking or, or overload. It, it's really when there's uh, extensive sweating and, and consequently you get a, uh, a whole body, what they call a sodium deficit. In other words, you're sweating out a lot of fluid and you lose a lot of sodium and salt in your sweat and that causes the, the fluid spaces that are between the nerves and the muscle, what they call the interstitial space, they, call, they causes that to be contracted or shrunken. So your body has a, so much fluid and, and it's trying to keep you know, the fluid in your circulation to keep you alive. So that area of fluid space between the, the nerve and the muscle gets shrunken. And that causes it, causes it to become hyperexcitable. And so it kind of goes into a spasm on its own. Now, now those cramps come differently. You, you may feel a little twinge at first. You may see your skin jumping. Uh, they're certainly not necessarily uh, overheated. Sometimes these are called heat cramps. That you don't have to be overheated or even, or even in the heat. Uh, but it, they, they tend to start subtly. And then they become more widespread, and it can be in your quadriceps, in your hamstrings. It can really be in full body. And, and so you really, it's a, it's a sodium deficit coincident with extensive sweating. Okay, so if we replace electrolytes, you replace those sodium potassium pump needs to, you know, work. People are always asking me, bananas, we always talk about chocolate milk on this show as a good replacement beverage if you possibly needed electrolytes, but what about those cramps, and I know this is not fitness-related, that happen in the middle of the night, those wicked cramps that people get in their legs, maybe they worked out that day, or maybe they didn't. Do you think that those, and maybe just your opinion, that those are also deficiency, sodium electrolyte deficiency, and that bananas, tonic, any of those things can help? Well, let me, there's a lot of questions. Just let me address yep. it from the back end. Uh, the night cramps, it's not really certain what those are. Now, if you've overloaded your, your body and, and you've damaged, and as we talked about before, uh, as you bend your leg or, or, or put your, you know, force your foot to go in a downward position, 
that causes a shortening of the muscle, and that can go, go into spasm. Regular night cramps that have nothing to do with, you know, overloaded muscles and exercise, it's really not certain what that is. Um, but the, the addressing of the exchangeable, you know, sodium deficit-related cramps from sweating, you have to realize that in sweat there's about 10 to 15 times as much sodium as potassium or any other electrolyte. And, and so potassium pills or bananas or cantaloupe or oranges or any magnesium or calcium, those are not going to correct it. Uh, you, you really have to uh, put the sodium back in with the proper amount of fluid. Now, too much fluid can cause a problem, too, because that can kind of wash out the electrolytes. And, and so you have to be careful there. Uh, you mentioned tonic and, and uh, quinine. Those do affect, uh, in, in a good way, uh, the cramping and can actually disable the normal electrolyte control across the muscle membranes, but it, unfortunately it does it across your whole body, and quinine can be very toxic to your liver if, if you take enough of it. But the real way to do it is, is to make sure that you're offsetting your sweat fluid and your sweat sodium with appropriate intake, not necessarily during the activity, because some people can lose thousands and thousands of milligrams of sodium while they're exercising. It's really just day to day. You need to make sure you're replacing the salt that you lost. When should people worry about cramps, Dr. Bergeron? When should they worry? Because women get leg cramps all the time. And then, then they worry if it's claudication, if they've got peripheral artery disease, if they've got any of these things. When do they worry that a pain in the calf is just simply a muscle cramp? Maybe their shoes are old. You know, maybe they walked just a little bit far or they twisted a little weird or they didn't stretch their calves or something. When do they worry? Well, you, you raise an important point. I mean, the, the type of cramps we were talking about related to exercise certainly just fall into those two categories. And if you haven't been exercising and, and or any kind of extensive sweating and all of a sudden you're getting a cramp somewhere, you know, look at to the, to the activity that you did, you know, in, in the recent history. If there's no reasonable explanation for it uh, and it continues, then you need to see your health care provider to, to look at because there are other clinical conditions that can cause uh, you know, cramp-like uh, sensations, and, and you need to address that. Uh, but again, most people who are exercising and physically active are going to have one type of cramp related to fatigue and overload or the other, or maybe even both at the same time related to extensive sweating. So those ones that are caused by medications or if you have blood pressure, talk to your doctor about those. If you're worried about them, if you get pains in your legs or anything like that, when you walk, whenever you walk and the pain gets better when you rest, make sure you talk to your doctor right away about those. But Dr. Bergeron, we have just a minute left. So what about massage and stretching and where do they fit in for these athletic cramps when you're running or swimming or any of this? Well, again, if, if it's cramping that you're trying to prevent that, that is related to overloading the muscle and tendon, then everything you just said, the, the massaging and, and the stretching and increasing your range of motion will indeed help. But keep in mind, not all exercise-associated muscle cramps are the same. The ones we just described are related to overload, and you can improve that by increasing your range of motion, your fitness, and decreasing the, the load on the muscle. The other type, if it's twitches, they come on subtly, they become more widespread, and you've been sweating a lot, that's probably a sodium deficit-related cramp, and you need to increase your salt intake uh, coincident with rehydrating. Uh, but keep in mind, you can have both, but, but also the great news is both are preventable. Both are preventable, so stay hydrated. Remember chocolate milk for your replacement beverage, your sodium and potassium, magnesium. As Dr. Bergeron says, massage, stretching, being adequately prepared, making sure you got good shoes, all of these things can help prevent those nagging cramps. Of course, see your doctor if you think there's a problem. This is Melanie Cole. You're listening to Train Your Body right here on Radio MD. Thanks for listening and stay well and stay tuned.